Wednesday for the funeral of the youngest victim of the Cumbrian shootings. 23-year-old Jamie Clark was one of 12 people shot dead by Derek Bird earlier this month. His parents say they will never understand why their son was taken. On that senseless day in Cumbria, 12 families were ripped apart. Today, that grief was shared in Luton, near Jamie Clark's family home in Northall. He was an estate agent, and returning from a viewing near Seascale, he was shot dead, at random, by a man he'd never met. He was just getting it together and... bang, literally. And it's just very, very hard to deal with that. And now I'm never going to see him again. God, that's the hardest part. Jamie Clark's parents say their son was kind and gentle and have no idea why Derek Bird took him from them. He can't answer those questions because of what he did. Um, I think, yes, something has happened that's... He's, he's sort of gone over the top in some way. And unfortunately, we will never know what his thinking was at that time. Jamie Clark had moved to Cumbria to be with his fiancée, Leanne. The anger will come, but what's the point? There, there is no point feeling anger at, at Bird because this, it won't change anything. It won't bring Jamie back. It won't bring the other victims back. This morning, Jamie Clark's coffin was carried by his friends and on the left, in the grey suit, by his brother Andrew. It was a private service behind closed doors. Jamie Clark's family has endured much media attention during their 16 days of grief, and for 45 minutes they wanted to be left alone for a final goodbye. It had been, they said, the hardest day of their lives, a day they thought they'd never see. Joel Mapp, BBC Look East, Luton. Still to come in the programme... A father of a soldier killed in Afghanistan has questioned the purpose of army metal detectors. Robbie Hayes from Cambridgeshire was killed searching for explosives in Helmand province in January. Today, a coroner in Wisbeach returned a verdict of unlawful killing. Robbie Hayes, 19, killed by a bomb on a mission he volunteered for. Today, his father Stephen and mother Diane heard in detail how he died colleagues with him that day gave evidence. Robbie, using a metal detector or Valon, had led their way, but triggered a device hidden in a home. A plan of when and where shown to the inquest. Stephen Hayes asked why the explosives weren't found. He was told sometimes devices don't register on the equipment. To that, he said, Valons are not worth anything. At Robbie's primary school at Burwell near Cambridge earlier this week, the regiment raised a flag in his honour. His mother, watching, spoke of what he loved most. Sport. Nothing else. Sport. What did he do? He, did, oh, he just loved everything about sports, you know, and um, that's it, really. And those two cups with his name on, going down through all the generations from now on, um, it's got to be pleasing, isn't it? Very proud. Very proud. A picture with Robbie she keeps on her phone always. A soldier, the coroner said, to whom the country are grateful. My Cartwright, BBC Look East, Wisbeach. A week of homecoming celebrations for the Royal Anglian Regiment has come to an end. Today, members of the 1st Battalion were at Norwich Cathedral. During a special service, there was an act of remembrance for the five soldiers who were killed in Afghanistan. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Now, did you know that Norwich is the only city of refuge in the UK, which means it offers a base for writers who are living in exile? It also takes part in a government programme to fast-track refugees to safety from war zones. As part of National Refugee Week, we've been to meet one family who've settled in Norwich. When you think of places in our region with refugee populations, Norwich might not be the first that springs to mind. But the city has quite a history of taking in so-called strangers. There are many thousands of references to, to immigrants and particularly to refugees all the way from, I would say, as long as there have been people living in East Anglia from Anglo-Saxon times right through the Middle Ages, times of strangers that people know about in Norwich, and a large number of refugees of all kinds before and after the Second World War. 
Sharon Masudi and her family are from the Congo, which has seen the world's longest running civil war. After 11 years in a refugee camp, the family were finally given refuge in Norwich. Sharon says the local Marlpit Community Center has played a great part in helping her family to settle. I've been lucky as a refugee to come here because when I came here, there were a lot of help, a lot of things which he, people they have given me. And uh, I'm among of those who are lucky. The family came to Norwich through the Gateway Protection Programme. It's funded by the Home Office, and refugees' applications are assessed at the camps rather than in the UK. In the four years it's been running, Norwich has settled about 200 people. People used to fight for for a pot to have the last bit of uh, like to have the last bit of food, but in England we don't. We just share. Tragically, Sharon's husband was killed in a road crash last year, but she's hopeful about the future and plans to start training as a nurse in September. Marianne Misimdar, BBC Look East, Norwich. Norwich City Council will ask the government to pay back the million pounds it spent on preparing for unitary status. The last Labour government said it could run all the services in the city, but the plan was scrapped by the new coalition last month. It's been Food Friday today at Dean's High School in Lowestoft. It's one of just a handful of schools in the region selected for the Food for Life partnership. The project will teach children about better school meals and where the ingredients come from. Kendring District Council is taking action to destroy an infestation of caterpillars. The council says the outbreak on a seaside cliff in Frinton-on-Sea must be tackled to protect the public. The caterpillar of the brown tail moth. Its white spots and hairy body hint that this is a creature not to be messed with. Its barbed hairs can cause a nasty rash. That's why an infestation in the cliffs at Frinton-on-Sea is causing concern. They like the hawthorn in particular, and they'll eat all the leaves from the shrubs. The moth overwinters as larvae in silk tents. In the past few weeks, thousands of caterpillars have emerged. We haven't had a problem like this during the summer uh, for, for five years uh, when we took um, um, drastic action, action to uh, control them. It's got to the stage now that we're getting, uh, we've had a number of um, sightings and, and complaints about them. The council's decided to destroy the caterpillars with insecticide. Next winter, it plans to cut out the silk nests by hand to reduce the chances of a similar outbreak next spring. It's easy to see where these caterpillars have been. This bramble bush, for instance, behind me has been stripped bare. For such a small creature, these caterpillars certainly can pack a punch. The caterpillars can also emerge in the autumn. The council will be hoping that the action it's taking now will be sufficient to keep numbers under control. Richard Daniel, BBC Look East, Frinton-on-Sea.